And for more on that big trade, sending Jimmy Garoppolo to San Francisco, let's bring in Andy Gresh. Okay. Women love this guy. <laughs> He's a good looking man. Do you like what they got in return, and what do you make of the timing of this deal? Well, it's interesting because when you think about the end of the season for Jimmy Garoppolo, the Patriots lose their leverage to do anything with him. And therein lies the rub in that when you've got a guy who at the end of the day could walk away as a free agent or you have to hand him $17, $18 million right. to stay around, I think we know that the Patriots weren't going to do that. I think some of the reports that were out there before of this bumper crop of picks they were going to get for Multiple Jimmy Garoppolo, firsts, maybe. yeah, has definitely been overstated. But look, they get a high second rounder, mm -hmm. and I think this is just the beginning. I would be very hard-pressed to think right now, as we talk right now, Yanni, that the Patriots are just done, and they just liquidated an asset, and Brian Hoyer got released, and they go turn around and sign Brian Hoyer, and that there isn't more to come. My first thought when this happened was they get a high second-round pick for next year because the middle-round currency is about to get traded either with players or for players, and you could take that high second-rounder next year, slide down twice, get a third and a fourth, and you're right back in business. That would seem very Belichickian. All right, so they're all in on Tom Brady at 40 years old. He stated he wants to play into his mid-40s. He is their future, even at his advanced age. So does that surprise you? Many thought he wouldn't maybe end his career right, in well, New England because they don't have a backup right now. Hoyer, yes, but it's Tom Brady here. Yanni, I think it's relative to what you think is the future. Because do you think Bill Two, Belichick? Three years, four years. All right. Do you think Belichick is thinking four years down the road? Because I think he's thinking this year, next year, in terms of if Hoyer comes into the organization, you've got him for the rest of this season and next season. Brady will be 42 by that end. Maybe they have an idea as to what they're going to do. I don't think Belichick is going to unplug. But I think for them, it's managing the now and the Brady years. However long they think that window is, we don't know. But to me, this is a clear sign that if Brian Hoyer, who got released by the 49ers after they got Garoppolo, if he walks through the door to be the backup, he's only 32 years old. So in theory, Hoyer could be here the rest of this season and two more seasons. That gets Brady till he's 43, and you have gotten a high draft pick for next year. Was there ever a point, maybe when he was tearing it up at the beginning of the last season during the Deflategate suspension, when Bill Belichick probably thought he was the heir apparent? Oh, yeah, of course. I don't think they would have kept him around on the roster if they didn't, Yanni. And to me, this is getting to the contractual stage. And that's the part of this where a lot, not a lot of people are going to talk about they don't want to pay a guy a ton of money to just sit on the bench. The Patriots aren't built that way. It was the way they've spent money in other places. The Stephon Gilmore contract comes into play here. So let's remember, Don Yee is also the agent right. for Jimmy Garoppolo. He's in right by Jimmy Garoppolo. And if he told the Patriots, hey, listen, I want the franchise tag or I'm going to walk, Patriots were in between a rock and a hard place, and they had to do something or else they were going to lose the player for whatever compensation they were going to get. So maybe missing that window uh, last year. Pat's currently one Tom Brady hit away from being in real trouble. Does that concern you? How? When have they ever not been one hit away on well, Tom Brady from Garoppolo when they were in real trouble? Hoyer, no? I mean, no, but I mean, think of the past since Brady has been here. True. You know, didn't, didn't we say that in 08? And then Matt Castle stepped up, and what did they do with him? They flipped him for a, a second-round pick, and they spent a seventh on him. I think they will adequately address the position because Belichick understands you need someone there. But what else are they going to do before 4 o'clock on Halloween to help make this a better football team? To me, that's the big question. All right, what do we make of Jimmy Garoppolo? We've only seen six quarters of him as a starter. He goes to San Francisco, Kyle Shanahan, an offensive mind. Do you think he has a Pro Bowl-type career for the next 10 years? Yeah, I think once they get talent around him. Right now, he's going to go to a football team that's got hot garbage around him. So there's going to be some issues there, and some people are going to down, you know, probably downgrade Garoppolo at the end of this season. Plus, he's got to go in and digest that offense as well. The guy who really gets screwed is Kirk Cousins because everybody right. thought Cousins yeah. was going to go to San Francisco. But, yeah, I think he's going to have a good career. I think he's got a good coach who he can partner up with now in Kyle Shanahan and ride out for the next, you know, four to six, maybe even eight seasons if everything goes well. But let's make no mistake about it. This is the Patriots getting building up value and then flipping a guy to get better value. And when they've done this with guys like Matt Castle, they've always gotten a higher draft pick 
than where they drafted the guy. So he sat here, the legend was built up, and ultimately they were able to flip him. Because they've had backups here before, but they haven't been able to flip for that kind of currency. So they got to believe that the guy's good and the Patriots have built up that value. I'll tell you what's stunning too, and Adam Schefter reported it, is he was bullish about the Pats not trading him for multiple ones. So something has changed according to Schefter's sources. Well, maybe he had the same sources that uh, Mort had when it came to deflate gate and people jerking him <laughs> around. Are very good. Last one. You've covered the Pats a long time. Where does this rank on just Monday night? Shefty tweet, surprise level. Um, I think the trade deadline has actually taken on some meaning now in the NFL, whereas it used to be just something that really didn't matter. So I think what we're seeing is a sea change in the league to where people are willing to do business because they, they know that it's, let me, you know, I think you could take a Patriots running back, right? Combine it with a third round pick and get somebody to help you defensively. I really think that is out there and it's up to them to find, which is part of why this move has happened. And you know what's interesting? Bill Belichick said the other day, we've always been open for business. Mm. That's him in welcoming the phone calls and saying, bring me your ideas. So I think in the last five years, the trade deadline in the NFL has changed, but it has kicked up a notch this year. And Schefter said talks began this morning and escalated pretty quickly. All right, Gresh, great stuff on Jimmy G, and we will see you uh, midweek for the Sports Wrap.